Hey! Our next speaker is uh, is Ryan. He's going to talk about something really cool he's been working on. I remember this uh, super early on in like May of uh, 2018, I think. This is like super early, um, like very initial fundamental discussions. Uh, I want to mention something interesting first. A lot of like, uh, he's obviously going to mention Dino, right? Uh, a lot of the very interesting ideas and implementations came from like taking code and working on it in like a non huge uh, um, a, a node like the node issue tracker is a huge space and like experimenting and making a lot of really cool changes and actually I, I remember Anna worked on worker threads in like um, a fork that existed for an audience uh, for a while and that like helped it evolve in uh, uh, and at this I'd like to think Anna can maybe maybe say if it, if it didn't uh, it made it move faster so um, I just want to say I I, I I work on node um, like a bunch and I opened a bunch of PRs for Dino for like uh, cancellation APIs because I like cancellation APIs it's it's one of my things now uh, and it, it's it's very different to work on like uh, on something like Dino versus something like node it's like it's it's Sometimes it gets stuck, but when it moves, it moves very quickly. So if you if you want to get into open source, and I'm sorry, Ryan, if you get a bunch of people who are like new to code, um, it's a good place to check. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll let Ryan take it, um, and uh, thanks a bunch. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, thanks for those PRs, by the way, and uh, of of course. Uh, uh, Everybody is uh, very welcome to contribute to, to Dino. Um, it's 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 a pretty fun project. Um, uh, yeah, very very different than the Node code base. Sorry for my <laughs> infinite regression uh, screen here. Let me fix that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's 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 a fun it's a fun project to to work on because uh, it's all in Rust and it's it's new. Um, I'm going to uh, just give kind of the basic overview of, of what we're doing here. Uh, I think, um, uh, so, you know, I, apologies to, to people who, who know a bit more about Dino already, um, but uh, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty new project and uh, yeah, just wanna, just wanna kind of give the, the, the basic intro. Um, so, uh, Dino is a, a new command line runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript, and it aims to be fun and productive. Uh, I think that dynamic programming languages run the world. Most of the business logic in the world is written in JavaScript or TypeScript or Python or Ruby uh, or Lua. Uh, dynamic programming languages are really useful because you can move very fast in them. And uh, I think it's a, a good scripting plat prat platform is, is too useful of a tool to accept the status quo. So this, this project is, is attempting to make, make something fun and productive, uh, but undertaking this, this, this project is, is, uh, is non-trivial. Uh, so, you know, we, we, try, we try to make it, make it uh, fun and productive for, for the users, but but uh, uh, yeah, do, uh, in, in, we we have to we have to do quite a bit to to make to give give the appearance of of everything working out quite nicely. So I'm just going to go over a few of the features here of uh, kind of the the main the main uh, the main shape of this project and and uh, give you an idea of of how this thing works. So as I said, this is a thing for executing JavaScript and TypeScript, by the way. Um, and uh, yeah, one, one thing you might notice is that Dino is a single executable file. We do not distribute a tarball full of header files and ancillary uh, directories that, that need to exist in a certain place. It's a single file uh, and it's always and forever going to be distributed as such. Um, and we try to keep it as compact and independent of system libraries as possible. And this executable is all you ever need to run any Dino program. Uh, 
So, you know, this makes it really accessible for using it for, for small scripting tasks, right? You, you're, if you can, you can just kind of drop it into any system, this, this single uh, exe file or executable file. And, uh, and you should have a, a very robust scripting platform available to you. There's, there's not a lot to set up. Um, we ship on, on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, uh, TypeScript is built into this. That means that the, the TypeScript compiler from Microsoft is actually somewhere inside of, of the Dino executable. Uh, and we, we do a bunch of uh, trickery uh, to, to make this, this work out uh, uh, nicely. Uh, type, the TypeScript compiler is uh, the TypeScript, the type checking operation of, of TypeScript is, is a relatively slow operation. Uh, and we try to make that as fast as possible by using V8 snapshots to start up the TypeScript compiler quickly. Um, when we don't need to do type checking, we can transpile from TypeScript to JavaScript very fast. I think this is one of the, the main benefits of TypeScript actually is that it, it is uh, a superset of JavaScript and, and the, the operation for type stripping to strip out the types is, is a relatively simple one. And uh, we do that with, with a, uh, a Rust uh, TypeScript uh, 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 AST uh, uh, library called called uh, SWC, uh, but of course normal JavaScript is is also supported uh, and is a first class citizen of course, um, and uh, is is uh, sh does not incur any overhead when when using it. So so if you use just normal JavaScript, it does not go through through these uh, through the TypeScript compiler. It, it, it should it should run very fast and and smoothly as as you're used to with with uh, with Node. Um, and yeah, the general idea is is that you know as as you're kind of scripting things, like you start out in a really hacky mode, like you're you open a file, you just start smashing the keyboard, things kind of develop. Uh, organically from there. And, you know, nine times out of 10, you throw away that code and never, never look at it again. Uh, but sometimes that code kind of develops into something that sticks around for a while, kind of becomes, becomes part of a, a bigger project. And at that point, you know, uh, TypeScript has, has proven itself to, to uh, uh, enable larger, more complex JavaScript uh, code bases. You you kind of you kind of want to have the the type checking when when you're dealing with with large complex things, and uh, uh, then it, you know hopefully hopefully uh, Dino allows you to kind of smoothly step from from JavaScript to to TypeScript, uh, and you know at, at some point you probably find that you know you've got this 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 application, and maybe you find at some point that there are some some uh, hot bits of code that need to be optimized away. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't quite uh, uh, fleshed out this story yet, but, but the hope is, is that, you know, event, you, can, you can then implement those, those parts in Rust and uh, compile to WASM and, and be able to, uh, to optimize things down to native code where, where necessary. Um, but for the most part, you know, I, I, think, I think we are, most problems are engineering time bounded rather than CPU time bounded, uh, and you know you you just want to be able to move as fastly as as fast as possible. Um, something different when comparing uh, Node and and Dino is is Dino has has a different set of APIs, uh, and in particular tries very hard to be uh, web compatible. So it, all of these web standard APIs are available uh, in Dino. Uh, and we take this very seriously. In fact, Dino runs the web platform tests that uh, browsers run uh, to ensure that, that these, are not, these are not just lookalike APIs, but are, are exactly what, what you expect, act exactly as, as they should in, in web browsers. Uh, and this is kind of an ever-expanding list. Uh, uh, you'll, 
you of course have fetch out of the box. You have uh, web streams, which is kind of part of the, the fetch API. You have web workers and message channel and local storage, web socket, abort controller, thanks to Benji. A, a lot of APIs are more APIs are supporting that. We have web GPU support out of the box. It is an unstable API, uh, but but yeah, Dino can you can uh, uh, program GPUs with Dino using using web GPU. And as I said, it's it's unstable, but uh, I, I have high hopes for this in in the future. This this allows you to do uh, very interesting uh, high performance uh, things like like. Uh, uh, advanced statistics stuff, uh, uh, machine learning models. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I think, I think this, this web GPU support is, is, is going to be come, uh, more visible over time. Uh, we've got blob location, event target, text encoder, text decoder on load, prompt, confirm alert, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can, you can have a look through, uh, uh, in fact, let me just open a terminal here. Uh, here's my terminal. And if I type Dino and I type window, oh, by the way, we have the window object. Uh, you can just kind of scroll through this thing and have a look at, at all of the, the various APIs that, that uh, Dino supports. Um, Web crypto is coming along. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very webby API. Webby API. Uh, and uh, this, this uh, you know, in, in many ways, Dino uh, can be considered a web browser. It's a headless web browser. It doesn't support all of the DOM APIs and stuff. It's, it's, it's explicitly for server side uh, uh, scripting. But uh, but it it is uh, it is a web browser in 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 some sense and uh, as such is is represented on on MDN. Uh, so when you when you're browsing these these browser compatibility tables, you'll you'll see Dino represented all over the place. Uh, so yeah, the the general idea is that uh, uh, you can just take code that that runs on the web and uh, run it on Dino relatively easy. That's, that is the hope. Um, Dino has uh, this secure execution by default. Um, so in Node, when we were developing Node, uh, we plugged all sorts of holes in the system so that you could access the file system or you could access the network. Um, V8 uh, is, 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 is a secure sandbox. Box, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, once once you kind of plug a hole in it to to open network connections, well, you, you know you're, you're, you've kind of you've kind of uh, ruined the ability to to uh, ruined that feature of, of of V8 that 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 it acts as this this uh, this sandbox. Um, so by default, uh, and let me just oops, let me just copy. Oh, I can't copy here. Sorry. Let me just copy this this, uh, this line here and uh, come back over to my browser. So, uh, by the way, Dino can run run uh, URLs uh, 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 out of the box. So this is this is a little this is a, a, a URL to to some TypeScript file or JavaScript file apparently uh, that just does console log and uh, welcome to Dino. Of course, when you go to this this URL, you get this fancy HTML page, but we do some trickery. Uh, it, when you curl this, uh, you actually just get the raw text here. Uh, and what what's what's happening is is that uh, this web when you go to the URL with the web browser, there's a, an accept header that says that that it accepts HTML and and uh, uh, our website delivers delivers this this uh, nice nice HTML page for you. But if you if you just do this with curl, you will you will just get uh, you will just get the raw text. Uh, and as such, you can uh, kind of pump type that right into uh, right into Dino here. Dino knows how to download stuff and run it. So in this case, it, it has downloaded this this uh, welcome.ts. It has type checked it, of course, and and then run it, ran it. Um, so, this, 
where was I going with this? So I was talking about secure execution by default. So this program uh, all, just prints out something to standard out. Uh, so it, you know, it, it does not need access to the file system or to uh, the network. And uh, by default, it, it does not have that. So, so if, 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 you tried to, if you tried to fetch uh, uh, some website, uh, it, would, it would error out. Um, and so, you know, of course, of course, we want to enable people to access the network or access the disk. Uh, uh, that is the purpose of, of a server-side scripting <laughs> uh, uh, platform. Um, but you kind of want to want to opt into these as as necessary, and so we we provide all these allow flags like allow read to uh, allow uh, read access to the file system or allow net to allow network access, um, uh, and in this way you can you can uh, with some some amount of confidence uh, uh, run arbitrary scripts uh, and and uh, uh, know that it's not going to be not going to be doing uh, nefarious things. Um, so in Dino, we use ES modules. Uh, there's, of course, no 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 common JS require or anything. We we want to live in in kind of the the modern JavaScript world. Um, and uh, you know, just like you can run URLs directly from the command line like this, uh, you can. Uh, also import uh, URLs directly in in uh, from from Im import statements, um, and uh, yeah, uh, amazingly this this actually works in in web browsers as well. Uh, I, so this is this is uh, really a, a simple and, and browser compatible module system. So so this is this is our mechanism for for linking to third party code. Um, and there's no notion of node modules or index.js or adding file extensions to, to, uh, to uh, module specifiers. Um, it's not dependent on any centralized server. You know, of course, I, I link to this dino.land Dino website, uh, but you're free to, to not use that at all and, and uh, uh, use, use uh, esm.sh or... or uh, Cruxland or or any any uh, any other uh, uh, server that that's that's hosting JavaScript, just like in the browser, right? Uh, we you know the the browser is not dependent on Google.com existing. Uh, uh, you are you are free to link to any CDN that you would like to, uh, and we think that this can work for uh, server side code as well. Um, I think you know something to mention is is when I ran this the second time, you don't you don't see this download message happening. In fact, this happens this really fast. Uh, so you know, Dino like the web browser has has a cache and uh, it downloads this thing on on first request because it doesn't have it in the cache. But when you go to run it again, there's the we we already have this downloaded. Um, there is kind of a, a dash dash reload, which is which is kind of like Command R in in the web browser, which will which will cause it to re-download. Um, uh, but but generally, uh, Dino Dino is caching this this stuff. And you know, just just for your information, if if you look in this Dino dir as we call it, uh, you'll see all sorts of of uh, of uh, weird stuff in here. Uh, uh, and I'll just leave it to you to to have a look around at, at what's what's what the cache directory looks like. But it's 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 an internal it, internal concept. So it, anyway, that's that's all to say um, uh, vendoring is possible, uh, and you can work on an airplane with this. You do not always need network access, uh, and I would argue that that uh, you know. This is effectively the workflow of, of NPM and Node as well. I mean, you need access to, to npmjs.org to work properly, right? Like in order to in install modules. Uh, and you, you, need to, you need to be able to download and cache those things. Um, so, so, you know, effectively we're, we're, uh, we're just using this URLs, this, this browser standard to, to specify where to get the code from. 
Uh, it's these, these URLs are, are really uh, nice concepts and, and happen to be part of the JavaScript standard. They specify a server and a path. And that happens to be exactly what, what you kind of want for, for, uh, for a module system. Uh, we do support import maps uh, uh, if, if you're if you're tired of of writing these these very long uh, URLs. Um, yeah, Dino supports uh, has all this sort of built-in tooling. So if you type Dino help, you'll see all these subcommands. So there's like Dino bundle, Dino cache, Dino compile, uh, Dino completions, Dino coverage, Dino doc, Dino eval, Dino format, Dino install, Dino lint, Dino LSP, Dino repl, Dino run, Dino test, Dino types, Dino upgrade. Uh, I'm not going to go into everything that's here, but uh, you know, we essentially there's there's all of the the JavaScript tooling that you want in there. Like we we have all of all of this, we have a lot of uh, compiler infrastructure and whatnot built into built into Dino. Uh, uh, and we're we're exposing this at, to to uh, to end users in in the form of of these tools. Uh, and so this this all this this should be all you need to get going. You don't need this this uh, large set of of uh, ancillary tooling to to uh, to develop software. Uh, you can format your code with Dino Format, and you can lint your code uh, with Dino Lint. By the way. Hundred times faster than ESLint, uh, as is format and prettier. These these are these are Rust implemented toolings. Um, but yes, I'll I'll allow you to uh, to dig through those yourself. Um, I wanted to give just a small little demo of what it looks like to program in Dino, um, and uh, to do this, I'm I'm going to. Uh, write a little program. And so what this, this program is going to do is it's going to get a URL at, from the first command line argument. It's going to fetch that URL. It's going to extract the server header. Uh, and then it's going to print the header, the, the value of that header to, to the console in, in, a, in, in a color uh, so that we can get a little usage out of, um, out of the imports. Uh, okay, so so uh, I've, I've got the code right here, but I'm, I'm just going to, to, to go ahead and, and try to program this. this. Uh, so get server header dot ts. Uh, and uh, first of all, I, you know, we, we want to get the first argument here. So, uh, so let's, let's do Dino args zero is, is how you're going, we're going to get the first argument instead of uh, uh, process.argv, I believe it is in, in Node. And what I'm going to do is let's just start simple and and try that. So so we'll do Dino get server header and then I'm going to say blah and make sure that it prints that out. Okay. Seems seems to work properly. Okay, so so let's say this is going to be the URL then. Right. And I we're going to fetch that URL. And fetch is an asynchronous function, and so we'll await it, and we'll get the response, right? And by the way, top level await, yes, we have that. Console log response, let's log that out and make sure we're getting something. So now I have to give it a URL, let's do google.com. Okay, and now I'm getting an error. It's saying uncaught permission denied requires net access. This is what I was mentioning before that without any arguments, this is this is somewhat of a secure sandbox here. And uh, so what, what I can do is do this allow net and that will give it network access. And uh, that allows us to, to see, see the response here. We could uh, narrow this network access just to google.com, for example. Uh, and it's not liking that because I think that there's a redirect happening into to uh, www.google.com. Uh, so, so kind of the, the, the fetch forwarding is, is, is uh, not allowing that to happen. Another thing we could do is prompt, which will um, uh, kind of interact, allow us to kind of interactively uh, uh, 
walk through all of these network accesses. So, so Dino requests net access to google.com allow. Let's say yes. And then it says Dino requires net access to W because we got redirected. Yes. Okay. And then finally we get the, the response here. Okay. So, so far so good. Now we want to extract the, the headers, right? So res headers, uh, my, uh, my fetch knowledge is not is not extremely great here, but let's try server and let's see if, if this works. Console log server. Uh, okay. So oh, let me just do this allow net. Okay, that, that seemed to work. So, so I've I've extracted the the server. Oh, and by the way, you know I'm I'm editing here in Vim because I am very old. Uh, but uh, uh, Dino uh, does have a uh, LSP built in uh, language server protocol that can interact with with uh, 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 fancy IDEs like uh, VS Code. Uh, and because we're, we're using TypeScript and stuff, uh, you get very, very nice uh, uh, tab completion uh, uh, for, for those of you used to not programming like we are in the 70s. But uh, this, is, this is just how I do it. So apologies for that. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and we wanted to print this in magenta. And there is this magenta function in uh, DinoLand slash standard slash fmt slash colors.ts. So let me just import that. Import magenta from HTTPS Dino land std fmt colors.ts. And what we'll try to do here is wrap this header value in that. Let's see if that works. You should download that guy. Okay, and we are getting a TypeScript arg uh, error here, which is saying the argument of type string or null is not is not assignable to parameter of type string. Uh, well, that's because this is potentially a null value here, and if I add a little exclamation point, I believe that should make TypeScript happy. And yes, we are able to print the the uh, the header there. And notice I'm I'm not downloading the 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 uh, the colors uh, uh, script anymore when I when I run it a second time. Uh, by the way, I should I should mention the the Dino standard library. Uh, so we you know un Node basically has the standard library built into the executable. We've we've decoupled this in in Dino uh, because we've got this this fancy uh, uh, URL fetching mechanism. Uh, and in, in here, we've got all sorts of, of nice utilities that, that you, you might need. For example, uh, formatting colors. Uh, and uh, we do have uh, some nice documentation browsing tools here. So you can, you can have a look at, at uh, you know, all, all the fancy terminal utilities you, you might want are, are available. Uh, and uh, yeah, lots of other stuff. UUID, WASI. Uh, uh, I think one thing to mention is, is node support. Uh, there is this STD slash node, which kind of implements some of the node APIs. It's, it is not complete, but it is kind of growing in, in uh, uh, parity with, with node. So this, this, this STD slash node allows you to uh, uh, port node code over to Dino in, in an easier way. But I digress. I'm getting off topic. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that, that's just a little flavor of of, of Dino. Uh, uh, yeah, Dino Dino is is an amalgamation of of many different technologies here, uh, and it's worthwhile just to just to let you know how how we make this possible. This is of course built on top of V8, the best JavaScript VM in the world. Uh, Rust uh, is used very heavily, uh, uh, and uh, we are we are uh, quite a large Rust project with with uh, many different crates. 
Uh, we use the TypeScript compiler from Microsoft, uh, which is written in JavaScript. Um, we use Tokio. Uh, this is this is essentially the equivalent of, of our library libuv uh, uh, that we previously wrote for Node. Uh, we 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 felt no need to rewrite this. <laughs> this exists already in 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 Rust. It's called Tokio. Uh, SWC I already mentioned is a uh, JavaScript TypeScript parser. Uh, it's used in Lint and Docs and dependency analysis. Uh, we use a library called Rust TLS instead of OpenSSL. We use Hyper and Request, which are HTTP libraries in, in Rust. We use WGPU for the WebGPU uh, implementation, Tungstenite for WebSockets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think my point here is that one of the main advantages of Rust as I see it uh, is the fact that there is this crate system and there is a defined build system. Uh, when we built Node, uh, C++ is very difficult. It's very difficult to link in uh, third-party libraries. It's, it's so difficult that, that uh, I ended up writing an HTTP server from scratch to, to, to implement Node's uh, HTTP libraries. Uh, it, it's it's not it's not very possible to simply link in third-party C++ code. It requires a lot of uh, a lot of difficulty, um, and uh, you know I, I think the main benefit of Rust, as I see it from a maintainer's perspective, of course Rust has many many great features, but uh, uh, the ability to to kind of pull in and utilize all of this third-party code. Uh, allows uh, Dino to make great strides very quickly. Uh, uh, something that that Benji uh, 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 noted before. You know, we we mull over decisions very carefully, uh, and and sometimes things get stuck. But uh, you know, once once we kind of decide on on a direction for things, uh, they tend to move. We we tend to to be able to move very quickly because of this. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's worth mentioning that Dino is not a monolithic program. Uh, the system is broken up into several crates, uh, which allow people to roll their own JavaScript VM. Uh, so this is, uh, it's worth mentioning Rusty V8, which is our safe Rust wrapper around V8. Very non-trivial, took us years to figure out how to do this. Um, it both uh, interfaces, it, it's both a, a wrapper around the C++ APIs at, at zero cost wrappers, uh, uh, but also uh, uh, importantly, it, an interface to, to V8's uh, uh, build system, uh, which is GN, uh, and interfacing with that properly is non-trivial, I will just say that. Uh, Dino Core uh, uh, is 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 a wrapper around Rusty V8, and this is uh, starting to make R Rusty V8 is essentially exactly the C++ V8 API, but in Rust, Dino Core starts making this much more nicer to use. So it, it provides this op system that essentially connects JavaScript promises to Rust futures. So we, we really have kind of asynchronity in, in both worlds. Asynchronity is the word. Um, uh, Serity V8 is, is a, a very slick piece of technology that uh, essentially allows us to uh, uh, bind gen uh, 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 calls from, from JavaScript in, in, into Rust uh, in, in a fairly optimal way. Uh, I won't go into that uh, in any detail. Uh, uh, Dino uh, slash extensions, uh, I'll, I'll, I think has been recently renamed to Dino EX, you know, EXT, I'll just point this out here, uh, is uh, a directory of subcrates where we implement various APIs. So if you want, you can, uh, pick and choose which which API. Maybe you want to build a JavaScript runtime that does not have uh, the HTTP server in it, or does not have a uh, WebSocket in it, because or does not have a Web GPU. You you find this ridiculous. Well, you can you can mix and match as 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 you desire here, and and uh, we've we've neatly broken this up into into various pieces for for that specific use case. 
Um, by the way, speaking of uh, Dino's HTTP server, it's based on Hyper. It is a native Rust uh, web server, and it is fast. Uh, this, this here uh, is response time histograms uh, showing at the top Dino 1.9 versus Node in the middle versus Dino 1.9 with our previous HTTP server. Uh, and, uh, you know, farther left is better. That, that, is, that is lower response times. Um, uh, so yeah, we, we, have, we have kind of a, a web server built in and it is, uh, it, we have just started optimizing this. It's, this has been a long time coming uh, and there is more to come. Uh, so, uh, you know, look out for, for blog posts on this in the future. We, we hope to, to uh, to, to really uh, uh, push push this to the limit and and make sure that that you can serve HTTP as fast as possible. By the way, this supports HTTP two out of the box, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I I think it's it's looking quite nice. Um, I should mention the Dino Company. Uh, this is a for profit endeavor. Uh, uh, I I think. Uh, it makes sense when developing technology to, to have stakeholders who, who are invested in, in the project. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, we, we all believe in, in open source and, and Dino remains MIT licensed and will forever remain that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, big complex projects like Node or Dino uh, need a revenue stream. It, you know, engineering, you, you, you know, it, it, it might seem like like Node, for example, is just an amalgamation of, of random engineers coming together to, to create this thing, but that is not how Node was made. Node was made with uh, funding and, and uh, very specific high quality engineering work. Uh, uh, and we need the same in, in Dino and high quality engineering work is not free, I assure you. Um, so, so yeah, we're 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 trying to build a company here. Uh, of course, we're we're Dino. Uh, this open source project is 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 what we're building, uh, but we we hope to build a business around this as well. Um, and you know, I, I mentioned earlier that that uh, you can kind of roll your own JavaScript VM. Um, uh, so you know, we've we've done this kind of explicitly in mind with with uh, our new product, um, Dino Deploy, which uh, uh, is a, uh, a new uh, VM. It is, a, it is a, a, you know, I've, I've written three JavaScript VMs in my life. Uh, the first one was Node, the second is Dino, and the third is Dino Deploy. So this is a, a VM uh, specifically designed for, for kind of the, a serverless model. Uh, and it is a globally distributed JavaScript VM. Uh, and in some sense, it's, it's very similar to Cloudflare workers. Uh, we provision you a subdomain and we can execute JavaScript when, when people access that, that subdomain. Uh, so you can, you can essentially, it's a programmatic web server. Um, <clears throat> we use uh, Anycast. We have an Anycast IP address. Uh, and that routes requests to the nearest data center, which we have 22 of uh, at last count, uh, which means that, that you're always accessing something very close to you. Uh, and uh, in, in, in some ways, you can think of this as a dynamic CDN. So, so this, it's a, you're, you're executing JavaScript at the edge, as they say these days. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, we like this model because we can optimize it end to end. This is not built on Cloudflare workers. This is not built on AWS Lambda. This is from scratch, end to end, our, our, our work. And we, ho we hope to optimize this end to end and build very nice APIs that allow people to move very quickly in developing uh, uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, so things like broadcast channel uh, allow you to send events to 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 uh, to broadcast events between all of these these different uh, uh, VMs running running worldwide. Uh, we're 
we're thinking about persistence. It's it's not there yet, uh, and and there's there's more APIs to come. We're 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 very excited and and uh, uh, having a lot of fun developing uh, this. Uh, this is this is a closed source proprietary system, and and yeah, it's a hosted Dino. So so this is this is what we hope to to build a business around. Uh, so so it is in beta. And uh, you know it's 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 provided for free right now, uh, so you know please please check it out. Give it give us some bug reports. But of course, you know if 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 you don't like Dino deploy and and you, this is this is much too uh, too nascent for you, by all means take Dino and uh, uh, take the MIT licensed binary that we distribute and and uh, uh, build your own web service. That that is that is by all means. Uh, 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 acceptable and encouraged. So uh, yeah, that's that's the end of my talk. I hope I haven't gone over time. Uh, I apologize if so, but uh, thank you for your attention uh, and feel free to email me if, if, uh, if you have any offline questions. Uh, <coughs> awesome, thank you very much, Ryan. It's, it's always uh, really interesting to see the project progressing and uh, obviously con like, congratulations on the company. It's a huge step, uh, and you get to do it like uh, as a part of the deciding team now, um, and as a founder, it's probably super exciting. Uh, the, the idea of running uh, Dino uh, off like um, a more lightweight containers uh, isolation layer is very interesting. I remember a project for Microsoft that, that ran like C sharp without um, uh, system calls called Singularity ones. It's like an extension of uh, of C sharp that was very interesting. I think they ended up using it in Azure for something, but it's it's a really interesting uh, concept, all right? So we have some questions. Uh, so thank you for the talk, first of all. Uh, Raz asked how you can track outdated dependency versions. Uh, well, you can you can. Uh... So yeah, we, we don't have uh, these uh, fancy utilities that NPM has where, where it can uh, NPM audit and whatnot. Uh, uh, it is a simple module graph. And, and, and so you know, the question is what, is, what does it mean to be outdated? Uh, 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 we, we have no mechanism for that. So, so you, you have to, uh, you have to, to uh, roll your own solution there. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say if, if, if it becomes a big enough problem, we would develop a tooling around it. But uh, generally, I would kick this into, into user space as, as a problem. Cool. <laughs> Next question. I think I asked one. Uh, Alan, can you? Alan? Can you move to the next? Okay, cool. Uh, so you mentioned like a bunch of these amazing tools like Dino Lane, Dino Format, uh, Dino Bundle. Uh, can I use it? And by can I, I mean like, is it a supported use case on non-Dino apps? Let's say I'm like writing front-end code using uh, React, for example. Uh, yes, but your mileage may vary, uh, and I, I, you know, the 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 hope is is that you you would be able to to do that. I think in particular, Dino Dino Bundle has has had a lot of controversy about. Whether whether or not how how we support uh, uh, web browsers there, but but uh, that is a goal. Uh, I'm not sure how you know the. It's a complicated answer about how well we're we're delivering <laughs> on that goal right now. Yeah, but it's it's a very cool idea. Like as as you said, these tools are very slow right now, and uh, developers need something fast to do their linking. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Omri asked. Uh, can Dino show function signatures from TypeScript uh, to built-in functions in the REPL? Um, no. So the REPL does have TypeScript support, uh, but it's uh, it, it it basically does the type stripping automatically. So 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 we we do not try to uh, we we do not try to do uh, uh, type checking in in the REPL and. Uh, 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 as such, the the repl is is fairly dumb and, and uh, uh, doesn't doesn't know what's what's happening uh, when it comes to uh, 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 signatures and and whatnot. Cool. Um, Alan, next one. Cool. Uh, Julia asked, uh, "What, in your opinion, is still missing in Dino?" Um, 
well, I, you know, I, I, I think uh, a lot of there's a lot of existing JavaScript code out there, and uh, there's a lot of people who are using Node. Uh, and it's a large lift to get people. Uh, I, I think a lot of people would like to use Dino, but uh, just find it inc inconceivable that how, how they would do that with with kind of an existing code base and existing tooling all built for for Node. Uh, and so uh, I think I think kind of the main the main missing piece is. And you know, by the way, I I, I, I don't expect large code bases to be ported to Dino like this. This is just too much of a of a large undertaking. But you know, I, I do hope that that uh, new code bases would would be thinking about Dino as 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 uh, something they could use. Anyway, that's all to say. Uh, you know, I, I think our Node compatibility could be better. Uh, I mentioned this this STD slash Node uh, uh, kind of compatibility layer, uh, and yeah, I, I I want to make the story there better and easier for people to to. Uh, not have this this massive fragmentation uh, in 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 the JavaScript world. But that said, I mean Node, you know, we're we're trying to change some things, and and it is fundamentally incompatible. Uh, and and there are there are very good reasons for making these these changes. So so yeah, it's it's kind of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good answer. I think it's uh, it's always very tricky. You want to only support like the new. Uh, yeah, that's the thank you. Um, you want to only support like the new correct version to not have to maintain a lot of legacy uh, like Node. Uh, but if you end up supporting like Node apps, you end up taking all that legacy. <laughs> so it's uh, well, not all of it. Like you don't take um, um, like the build system and a lot of the weird stuff. But you, it, it's tricky. It's a challenge. Lots of uh, decisions. Uh, I have another like last question before Alon uh, Alon kills me because we're over time. Uh, a lot of the web APIs I noticed are kind of wonky, uh, like to like to code in uh, in that they are writing like in several places when working on web APIs in Node, uh, you run into things like uh, that were simply written from a browser perspective. Like when you implement fetch, there is no concept of like all, all the concept and security and and headers, everything is very browser centric. Uh, like, are there any regrets about those APIs, or is it like worth the sacrifice in a sense? Uh, I, I guess I, I'm not sure what 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 you're saying. I mean, how how is it wonky? Uh, 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 and... I, I, I'll, I'll give an example. Let's say event target is a very fundamental and like important API in the web world. Um, it's a very wonky API. It has a lot of weird behavior. Yeah, yeah there, there is kind of a, like a very fine balance where you're you're saying, I, I like I have all this wisdom from the, like years of coding, and like writing async JavaScript platforms, and I'm gonna take all that like uh, learn knowledge and I'm gonna still implement like the that API because it's standard. Right. Uh, yeah. It's it's often uh, very painful to to do this this stuff. Uh, 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 one one example is with the streaming uh, APIs. Um, uh, I am I hate the web stream APIs. <laughs> they they are just absolutely wrong and and yeah. uh, <laughs> very very bad. Uh, and I have you know Dino. Uh, one of the first APIs that I implemented was was essentially a, a port of of Go's reader and writer. Which is essentially their stream API. It's very simple, very elegant uh, to to Dino to to JavaScript, uh, uh, with the idea that this would be this would be the the streams of the future. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, very sadly, uh, uh, it's you know we we see browser compatibility as more important than than. Uh, Kind of getting the APIs right, uh, and it's it's a hard pill to swallow. Often, uh, it, a lot of these APIs are not exactly what you want, um, uh, but uh, you know this is this is what people know. This is what people expect there to be, uh, and so so yeah, it's 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 difficult. But but <laughs> you know, I, I think the the nice thing is that these these web platform tests 
kind of take the burden off of us from designing these APIs. And it's just like, this is just the way, this is the way browsers work <laughs> and we are a browser. So we, we must, must conform to that. Cool. Yeah. It's, 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 it's tough, but it's, it's always, uh, like nice to talk and see how far you are gone. <laughs> like uh, you've progressed since the, the last time. It's really nice stuff, amazing progress. Uh, and good job and thank you for the talk. Uh, cheers. Thanks for having me. Bye.